I'm once again pleased to support this bill related to small business capital formation. And uh, again, I would like to draw uh, attention to uh, the dilemma that we find ourselves in uh, with the Export-Import Bank threatened uh, with non-reauthorization. And I am focusing on what happened yesterday. Yesterday, during a House Foreign Affairs subcommittee, hearing on the importance of trade promotion institutions like the Export-Import Bank, members on both sides of the aisle expressed their strong support for the bank and the jobs that it supports and sustains all across the United States. As a matter of fact, Republican Congressman Joe Wilson of South Carolina talked about three companies in his district that share a common bond. They all produce parts for the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, which is currently built outside of Charleston, South Carolina, at a facility that now employs 8,000 people. Representative Wilson added, as we continue to debate reauthorization, I hope we can focus on the fact of jobs and that there are more than 60 competing international export credit agencies that undercut and destroy American jobs daily. In a perfect world, the export import bank would not be needed. But unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, we do not live in a perfect world, quote, unquote. Further, Subcommittee Chairman Ted Poe of Texas asked XM Chairman Frank Hochberg to explain the damage that would be done to American small businesses if XM expires in June, eliciting this exchange. Specifically, Chairman Poe asked, what would happen to air traffic to air tractor in only Texas without XM Bank. XM Bank Chairman Hogberg replied, well, Dave Egbert recently said when, he, when um, Mr. Hogberg asked him, it's a matter of 68 jobs. That's the number of people likely to lose their positions at Air Tractor if the bank isn't reauthorized by June 30th, because right now half their sales, more than half their sales, are export sales. Responding to a question from Chairman Poe on why XM is important to national security, General James L. Jones, who served as National Security Advisor and Supreme Allied Commander in Europe responded, I don't believe it's in our, in our national interest, if I can use a military term, to unilaterally disarm. General Jones also noted how foreign competitors would welcome an end to XM. There is no evidence that Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping would suddenly about face and damn their tidal waves of export credits if Congress were to shutter XM's doors. They and the leaders of America's other economic competitors would welcome the United States unilaterally disarming and ending its export finance program, which means more business for their companies around the world. If XM is shut down, and the United States leaves the field on export financing, such a vacuum will not only undermine U.S. businesses abroad and risk jobs at home, but it would also undermine American influence and economic leadership at a time when it is needed more than ever. Mr. Chairman, with that, I yield back the balance of the Would the, the gentlelady yield for I'll a question? To the I, I'm yes. just curious. Does the gentlelady support trade promotion authority in the Trans-Pacific Partnership? Mr. Chairman, uh, I am not engaging in a discussion about the trade bill that is uh, before this Congress. I am bringing attention to Export-Import Bank and the fact that it will close down in June if we don't reauthorize. And I am bringing to your attention that it has the support of all of the members in the Democratic Caucus and many members on your side of the aisle. If only you would bring it to a vote, XM a bank would be reauthorized. That is what I am focused on today. I refuse to engage on the trade bill itself. 